In this lesson, we're going to multiply and divide in scientific notation. Previously, we learned how to write numbers from scientific notation to standard notation, and from standard notation to scientific. Now we're going to operate with those. When multiplying and dividing in scientific notation, I like to take it into two parts. I like to multiply my numbers together, and I like to multiply my exponents together. I basically like to group, which shouldn't be any surprise to you because we've been doing this previously. So I like to take my numbers and I'm going to multiply those together, so 5 times 2.9 times, and then I like to take my exponents of 10 and put those together. 10 to the negative 8 times 10 squared. Well, as we multiply this out, we get 5 times 2.9, which is 14.5 times. Now we have the same base, which is 10, so we're going to keep the base, and because we're multiplying, we're going to add the exponents. Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. So I get 14.5 times 10 to the negative 6. When you are given these questions, commonly you're going to be asked to write them in standard form, and you're going to be asked to write them in scientific notation form. They're going to ask you for both answers. So the first thing I want you to think about is, is this improper scientific notation? Well, hopefully you're looking at this 14.5 and going, no, that's not proper, because A has to be between, excuse me, I should rewrite this, A has to be between 0 and 10, not including 10. Well, 14.5 is too large. So, Rather than trying to change this number in scientific notation into another number in scientific notation, I like to put it in standard form first, and then take that number in standard notation and rewrite it in proper scientific notation. I highly advise this. I think it's the best way to do it. So we have 14.5 times 10 to the negative 6. That means our decimal spot is moving in this direction, 6 spots. So if I have my decimal here, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is where my new decimal spot is, and I'm going to fill in my holes with 0. So my number in standard notation is 0 0.00000145. That's in standard, so then we can write it in scientific notation. I know that I'm going to want my decimal point to go right here, because we want our number to be between 1 and 10, not including 10. So I'm going to have 1.45 times 10. Now I know it's a really small number, so I know I'm going to have a negative exponent. And then we're going to count our spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my new number in scientific notation is 1.45 times 10 to the negative fifth and that is in proper notation. We're going to do the same thing when we learn to divide. I'm going to group my numbers together and I'm going to group my powers of 10 together. Now 6.4 divided by 1.6 is 4 times 10 to the 4th divided by 10 to the 7th. They have the same base so I'm going to keep the base and because we're dividing, I'm going to subtract the exponents, and 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Is this improper scientific notation? Hopefully you're saying yes. So in scientific, my answer is going to be 4 times 10 to the negative third. Then we also need to write it in standard notation. Therefore, I'm going to move my decimal one, two, three spots to the left, and I get 0 0.004. This is proper standard and scientific notation. All right, I want you to pause the video and try this problem on your own. All right, assuming you did this correct, you probably put 7 times 4.3 times 10 to the negative 6 times 10 to the 12. Well, 7 times 4.3 is 30.1 
times, and then we keep the base and add the exponents times 10 to the 6. Hopefully you said this is not in proper scientific notation, so we're going to put it in standard notation first. It's a very large number. My decimal point is here. I'm going to move over six spots to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's where my new decimal spot is. So I'm going to fill it in with zeros. And I'm going to put in proper commas after every three so I can read the number properly. And my answer is 30,100,000. If we then take this number and write it in scientific notation, we should know that our decimal spot goes right here. So I'm going to have 3.01 times 10 to the, and it's going to be a large number, so a positive exponent. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 spots, so times 10 to the 7th. Again, I want you to pause the video and try this problem on your own. Okay, first you want to group, so I'm going to put my numbers together. 1.2789 divided by 5.22, and I'm, and I'm going to put my exponents together. 10 to the 9th divided by 10 to the 5th. Multi multiplying my numbers out, I get 0 0.245 times 10, keep the base, and I'm going to subtract the exponents, times 10 to the 4th. Hopefully you yet again said this is not in proper scientific notation. So I'm going to first write my number again in standard form. It's a positive exponent, so I'm going to move my decimal to the right. So if I had 2, 4, 5, and my decimal was here, I'm moving it 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to add one zero, and I'm going to add in proper commas after every three, and I have 2,450. And then I'm going to write this number in scientific notation. I want a number between 1 and 10, not including 10, so 2.45 times 10 to the power of, and when we count, 1, 2, 3. So I have 2.45 times 10 to the third, and that is in proper scientific notation. If you got these two questions correct, I think you understand how to multiply and divide in scientific notation. Let's look at one more problem, though. Commonly, you're going to see scientific notation word problems. They love to pop up on BCRs and ECRs on tests, and it's a way to show how scientific notation is used in real life. So I'm going to show you one problem. And the problem is how many times larger is the radius of the Milky Way, which has a radius of 3.9 times 10 to the 20th meters, compared to the radius of our solar system, which has a radius of 5.9 times 10 to the 12th meters. The first thing you should notice is they're asking how many times larger. So we want to know what number can we essentially multiply by the smaller radius to get the larger radius? Well, looking at our exponents, we know our solar system's a lot smaller. So what can I multiply our solar system by to get the radius of the Milky Way? Hopefully you're saying to yourself, I need to divide. So I'm going to have 3.9 times 10 to the 20th meters divided by 5.9 times 10 to the 12 meters. I want the larger divided by the smaller. Well, to do this, we're going to group. We're going to put our numbers together. And we're going to put our exponents together. It's asking how many times. No units are required, because as you can see, our meters cancel out when they're divided. So continuing this answer, we get 3.9 divided by 5.9 is 0 0.7 times, we keep the base, subtract the exponents, and we get times 10 to the 8th. So this is fine, except for the fact that it's not in proper scientific notation. Again, I want you to write it in standard form first. So if I have my decimal spot here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, 
seven, eight. And that's where my new decimal spot is. So I'm going to fill in with zeros. And then I'm going to write it using proper commas for every three. So we know it is 70 million times larger. Now if I wanted to write this back in proper scientific notation again, I'd have 7 times 10 to a positive exponent. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's going to be to the power of 7. But what I do want you to remember is this is asking how many times larger is the radius of the Milky Way compared to the radius of our solar system. Would we really say that it's 7 times 10 to the 7th times larger? No. So your answer is actually actually going to be 70 million times larger. You want your answer to be in standard notation. But of course, if it asks you for both, you should provide your answer in both forms. And this is one way we can apply scientific notation in the real world.